welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Definition and you're now locked into the channel where we've been watching The Watchmen to break down everything that you need to know about the new season on HBO. Throughout this video we'll be recapping the fifth entry in the series thus far and discussing where the show could be heading in the future. There will be heavy spoilers here so if you haven't had a chance to watch episode 5 yet and don't want to know what happens then I highly suggest that you turn off now. With that out of the way I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now let's get into our breakdown of Watchmen episode 5. Okay, so just a quick recap to bring you up to speed on everything. So far in Watchmen, Sister Knight has uncovered what looks to be a huge conspiracy inside the police that seemingly shows one of its high ranking officers was linked with the group known as the Seventh Cavalry that carried out attacks on the police and public. After this officer, Captain Judd, was murdered, it drew the attention of the FBI who sent in their agent, Laurie Blake, in order to investigate the crime. We've become aware of a trillionaire named Lady True who is operating in the area and may have connections to the mystery as well as several side characters such as Looking Glass who gets a lot of attention throughout this episode. This kind of mirrors excuse the pun, the original Watchmen aesthetic with the source material tending to focus on a single character such as the Rorschach issue, the Dr. Manhattan one and so on. Episode 5 itself opens in Hoboken in 1985 where we join a group of Christian missionaries that are trying to convert people to their religion. We later learn that one of the attendees at the fun fair is a young looking glass and throughout the protagonist stroll through the area we see a magazine for the Vite Method which was a workout program formulated by Ozymandias and a group of top knots. These are the group of street thugs that ended up killing the first night owl in his home but they also terrorised a lot of people in the graphic novel. Looking Glass or Wade as he's called plucks up the courage to go and talk to them spouting off about the doomsday clock and he's mocked by them before being taken away by a girl to a house of mirrors. There's lip service paid to the doomsday clock being one minute to midnight and for those who don't know in the original work this was pretty much seen as the countdown to Armageddon. Ozymandias launched his hoax alien invasion at this point and it united the world into fighting one common enemy and we actually see this play out in the episode. This entry is predominantly about doubles, reflections and duplicates and we see this exemplified early on with LG walking through a house of mirrors. There are several twins throughout the episode and we also get the duality of human character and this is cemented here with the top knot girl being clad in black trying to seduce the whiter than white Christian missionary. After she leaves him stripped naked in the Hall of Mirrors, the attack commences and it all comes crashing down. Now the ringing in his ear that LG gets is because when the alien landed, it launched a psychic blast that massively messed with people mentally, killing many and psychologically damaging a lot of those that survived. This kind of carries on through Looking Glass's psyche in the episode and we can see that he has a lot of problems. It's clear that the character never really left that Hall of Mirrors and like Batman with Crime Alley or any other superhero that was birthed out of trauma at an early age, they are just a young kid scared out of their wits trying to deal with the world around them. Looking Glass exits to see that there are bodies strewn everywhere similar to the graphic novel and we finally get a look at the alien squid that every fan will remember. It's the best introduction of the season so far and whilst Watchmen has its haters right now, I can't see anyone denying that this entire segment recaptures the feeling of the original work. We learn that Looking Glass, also known as Wade, often spends his time on the other side of a mirror whether he's looking at a focus group test or staring at people in an interrogation room. The character is often peering into people's souls, past the visions that they want to show the world and looking behind the mask, ignoring the mirror of the world that they present. Looking Glass's mask is also literal as it turns out it is a form of protection from psychic blasts and this becomes the sort of tinfoil hat of the series that also hints at the true intentions of the character. Wade took to becoming a policeman because, like many, he is still completely terrified of the alien attack from 30 years ago and he wishes to create a false outward persona that he is still in control. It's an awesome psychological study and I have to say that early on in this episode it really got its hooks into me. Watching him still pine for a woman that he ruined a relationship with due to his paranoia is heartbreaking and seeing him leading a help group really makes the character relatable. 
Looking Glass is this show's Rorschach, and it's fascinating to watch him deal with the duality of living in fear, whilst also presenting this devil may care gritty exterior. The character even eats raw beans, which was a big food source for Rorschach in the original graphic novel. Uh, she, in, in fact, is pretty much all he ate. And it's clear that he is aping the character in many ways. We also get implications that Hooded Justice and Captain Metropolis were in a gay relationship with one another on the TV show within a TV show that is slowly becoming the season's Black Freighter. Either way, Wade is paranoid to the core, ready to run to his bunker at the first sign of a little squid fall, and he lives in constant fear. We get mention of this when Wade is analysing the group early on in the episode, and similar to them, he is scared but he just doesn't want to admit it. He even puts up a wall when asked if he's scared, saying at the therapy meeting that he isn't afraid, and this again mirrors the duality within him. At Forever Pets we witness a cloning procedure that duplicates animals, and I believe that this is one of the procedures that Lady True has adapted for humans. Wade also comes face to face with his long lost love, and as someone whose dog was put down two weeks ago, this scene yeah, really got to me seeing Cynthia incinerate a dog for looking a little small. Yeah, these aren't good people. Through Cynthia we discover that Angela has been using nostalgia pills, and this is a slight deviation from the graphic novel, with that initially being a perfume fragrance that was supposed to bring back memories. This was created by Vite as one of his top selling ranges, however here the pills can cause hallucinations, and they force the brain to recall the past. They have been outlawed due to side effects which include psychosis, which it looks like is going to become a big focus of the next episode. Later we see Angela swallow a handful of these before she's arrested, and it's clear she's been self-medicating with these to get to the bottom of Judd's death. Anyway, Looking Glass is clearly helping many, but this mask is quickly pulled away by a new member, who questions if he's truly as unafraid as he says he is. Throughout his life, Wade has been tormented by women, and I can see this being a big point of contention for the character going forward. Whether it's the girl in the House of Mirrors, Cynthia helping him even if there's an undertone that she thinks that he's a loser, Laurie mocking his mask, or the woman at the meeting, it seems like most of the females that he encounters are there to belittle him and lead him along. The only one who isn't is Angela, but we do see Looking Glass betray her later in the episode, and I believe that the focus towards the end of the season will be him trying to repair this relationship. The woman at the meeting turns out to be a member of the 7th Cavalry, and after discovering that her ride home was the truck involved in the police shooting in the opening episode, Episode, he follows her to an empty warehouse where we discover the cavalry's real plan. They wish to open a portal to orchestrate another attack. Now there is some big bombshells that come in the episode, including the fact that Wade has been selected to become a member and was purposely lured here which again cements the female manipulation on the character. Also, those who thought that there was a shady side to Senator Joe Keane are proven right here, when he's shown to have taken over the leadership duties from Judd Crawford. Keane orchestrated the bomb at Judd's funeral as a false flag attack to paint himself out as a victim in order to drive his electoral push, and to also stop Judd's autopsy from going ahead. Keane says that his goal is to keep the peace, but in order to carry this out, he needs LG to arrest Angela due to her involvement in the investigation surrounding Judd. He doesn't know if she killed Judd or is just getting in the way of finding out who did it. All he knows is that she is going to be a problem. As a thank you or squid pro quo, Keen reveals that he will play him a tape that shows the truth. A video message from Ozymandias addressed to future president Robert Redford that confirms that the squid attack was a hoax. Byte has manipulated the press and media to get Redford into office and he selected the actor to continue his goal to build a utopia for mankind. Byte wished to weaponize fear to unite the world and this is completely mind-blowing for Wade, who has lived his entire life scared to death of the next attack. Byte has been manipulating the squid fall to provide an almost drip feed of fear to the public, and he wishes to form a partnership with the new president to make the world better. And I love how there are TVs on the wall, similar to Ozzy's setup in Karnak, that all relay this mind-blowing message to Wade. We then cut to Ozymandias, who is being loaded into the catapult and launched into the outskirts of his prison. We finally see the character land on what looks to be a moon circulating a larger planet, most likely Jupiter. Byte discovers the bodies of all that he has launched into the cold reaches of space, and using their corpses, he writes a message on the moon's surface saying save me. 
This triumph is cut short though by the Game Warden, who yanks the character back into his prison, and is revealed to be a clone of Mr. Phillips. Now personally, I believe that after Redford was elected, Ozzy realised that the world was not going to become a utopia as he planned, and after becoming deflated by this, he sold his company to True Industries in exchange for solitude from the planet. We know that True can change environments due to her pod in episode 4, and I believe that she escorted Ozzy to this moon, where he was meant to live out the rest of his life in peace. True doesn't want him to return, so as part of their negotiations, she created the Game Warden to keep him in the grounds. Whilst initially Ozzy thought this to be a paradise, he quickly realised it was a prison and thus wanted to escape. Now it may be Dr Manhattan behind it, as he is capable of space travel, and there is also mention of their god abandoning them, so this could be the case, but I guess we'll find out. If you've been keeping up with my series then you'll know that I jump back and forth between the two theories each week, so yeah I thought I'd just lay out both possibilities here. Fights bit ends with him being arrested by the game warden, and we cut back to Earth for another focus test. We get a reimagining of Careless Whisper, which has been present throughout the episode, and Watch as Looking Glass goes in and tricks Angela into confessing that her grandfather killed Judd and that she covered up the murder. The cactus on Wade's desk, which has been bugged, picks this up, and Laurie hears it all, leaving her office, gun pointed at Angela. Wade sits at his desk, pulling his mask down to hide behind it and what he's done. Though it looks like the character is in the clear, the episode ends with Wade's house being broken into by cavalry members, which once more cements that he has been misled and manipulated. Similar to the Christian leader at the start, the girl in the fun house and many more, throughout his life Wade has been told to deliver a message that has ultimately led him down a darker path. Now in episode 6 it is revealed that Angela has been taking her grandfather Will's nostalgia and that she has been using this to discover the truth about the character. Will did predict in episode 4 that she would unearth the truth about him and this looks to be the case in the upcoming entry. Angela is clearly becoming lost in the fantasy, unable to distinguish between her life and Will's and it looks like he, similar to her, took up the role of a police officer. This may cross paths with Judd's joining of the force, which could show how Will knew that he was a cavalry member. As for Looking Glass, I personally believe that he will defeat the cavalry group and will be the one to unearth the secret about Senator Keane, which will mean that the town will descend into war, with the masked policemen going up against the masked members of the group. No one will be able to trust anyone, and thus everyone will be left fearful and paranoid, except for LG, who, as we have seen, has overcome it all. It will be interesting to see where it goes, but I am hooked on the show at the moment, and can't wait to see what way it develops over the coming weeks. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode, and if you agree with the theories in this video. Comment below and let me know, and if you enjoyed this, then please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to check out our breakdown of the series so far, which goes over all of the things you missed, and where we think the show could be heading. We also do a podcast called Watching the Watchmen, in which we break down every issue of the Watchmen page by page, and also give our thoughts on Doomsday Clock. I'll leave that linked at the end, and if you want to come chat to me after the video, then make sure you follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT, or head over to my Discord server, which will be linked in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with all the latest videos on the channel, so hopefully I see you over there very soon. We're also giving away a free copy of the Marvel Phase 3 Part 2 box set on Blu-ray which contains Black Panther, Infinity War, Endgame, Captain Marvel and more, and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on Watchmen in the comment section below. The winner is going to be chosen on the 15th of November and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, I've been Definition, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.